Hi, Dr. B here, and let's take a look at valence electrons. Oftentimes when scientists get involved in the details of where electrons are around an atom, you know, subshells, atomic orbitals, the Pauli principle, etc., it's easy to lose sight of the big picture. And the big picture is that the valence electrons, that means the outermost shell of electrons, are by far the most important contributor to all chemical behavior. After all, the inner shells are, generally speaking, full. And so they don't have any variation. They don't affect the reactivity. The outer shell, on the other hand, wow, big difference. The big idea is that the outer shell matters a lot. And if you make the assumption that all atoms prefer to have full outer shells, that takes you an incredibly long way to predicting chemical behavior. It does predict that the noble gases, that is this column here with the full outer shells, all eight electrons, of course only two for helium since it doesn't have a second shell, but for all of the other uh, noble gases out to infinity, including Oganes in here, they have a full outer shell and they are basically chemically inert. That's a pretty big deal. That allows us to predict that the other ones will become like that in terms of their chemical behavior. And wow, the known behavior of the universe uh, physically really starts to kick in at that point, right? Neon, full outer shell, love it. Nice and stable. Sodium, oh my God, not stable. It's got this lone camper here. It is nowhere near like this one. What's the easiest way to become like this one? We'll simply lose that electron. And note, sodium will do that at a drop of a hat. The first column with its one valence electrons will all lose that valence electron to assume a noble gas configuration, and they will do so violently if necessary. Can you see the um, ramifications of this in terms of chemical behavior and how important this is to all of chemistry? I hope you can. Second. Uh, shell, something like, and that's not this one, but second shell will have two valence electrons. We'll lose them both. These are all plus two ions, no real exceptions. Let's go out to the, what I call the seventh shell, which some periodic table people might call the 17th shell. Ugh. In any event, seven valence electrons. What's the easiest way for chlorine to get a full outer shell? To gain one, perhaps. That sodium atom electron right there could go right there, satisfying both sodium and chlorine in terms of the outer shell. Is it any wonder that sodium chloride is a very common substance with an extremely stable behavior, extremely high melting point? Well, chlorine will gain one. All these will gain one. And it's all starting to come together. The chemical behavior is determined by the groups, which is the columns, and it's pretty predictable. This one will always lose one. This one will always lose two. These we're going to leave blank. Why? Because you may recall that you drop a shell when you go into them. And so they have their two valence electrons, but things are a little funky inside. They have unfilled inner shells, and therefore we'll have to deal with them separately. Sadly, we can't apply the valence electron rule for all these behavior, all the chemical behavior of these transition metals. We can say that they all have two valence electrons in terms of, you know, formally. And they're going to lose electrons. They're metals. They will always lose electrons. But how many? <laughs> it's a close call in terms of energy. Some of them do all sorts of things. They're called polyvalent. But now let's go out to here. Now we're at a case where you definitely have three valence electrons. You have no unfilled inner shells. And therefore, they're just going to lose all three. Once you get to four, it's equal to gain four or lose four. Nature has another plan in store, and that is to rather share electrons rather than lose or gain. So, uh, largely speaking, in terms of ions that form, people leave this one out. But now here you have five valence electrons. It's easier to gain three than it is to lose five, and therefore these tend to gain three electrons. Why do we have a minus three there? Because electrons have a negative charge. The oxygen group will tend to gain two electrons. The halogens here will tend to gain one electron. And these, with very few exceptions, do nothing at all. That's the behavior. Fine. 
As a result of this, we can draw electron dot structures, which will be a little summary of those valence shells, and that is the subject of the next slide.